Well, good morning, guys. It's Guido coming at you with a coffee talk live from the left side of the Atlantic with my coffee. And it's Pilgrim from the correct side of the Atlantic with Royal Blend Tea. He's back with his Royal Blend Tea, loose tea in a teapot, put into an old fashioned Guigo Miserable Monday mug. Buy one today. The cheapest chips now, we've reduced it down to 1% of its original value. You can get one for a dollar. It's a dollar mug. There you go. <laughs> That's not true. It's not a dollar. It's like four. <laughs> yeah, four dollars and forty cents. Hey, we're having a we're having a bit of a dangerous situation here in Florida, Pilgrim. Really? Why? What's happening? It's thirty-four degrees this morning. No. Yeah. That is dangerous. Wow. Fahrenheit. Yeah. Well, uh, that is dangerous. I think you need to call out the national guard. Michael. Yeah, we're pretty well shut down. I I just looked outside and there's just a the barest dusting of frost on my grass. Wow. So, wow, that's scary. Florida with almost snow. I don't know how anybody lives in these conditions. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, do you know what? You might be shoveling it off your yard later on. You never know, do you? I mean, I can't even I can't even walk the dog in shorts this morning. No, that's out of order. That, that is I, right I out. I'd be calling the national government, never mind the federal. I've called the federal government, never mind the local government. <laughs> Surely there's some cloud seeding they can do or something to try to... Yeah, or, or provide here. heaters to heat the grass or something. <laughs> that's, that's actually a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> a bunch of heaters in everyone's yard. You know, I, yeah. a friend of ours, a friend of my wife's, did a bunch of flowers and stuff on the porch for her birthday. Yeah. And I'm afraid that 40 or $50 worth of flowers is going to get nuked. It was a little early in the season. It was a bit of an aggressive move on her part. Right. Very nice spring flowers and stuff, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Spring. We're going to get We're going to get a couple... Yeah. Well, we're... May, sometimes you can get through by doing that, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. How's everybody doing this morning? we got Wayne, Artillery Bugs, Gator, Stickler... Sutek, Randall, Odd Dog, Kedge is here, Obrutbus, who else have I missed? Stickler? Poor old Sod's in the house as well. If I He's been you. in the house for the last two hours. <laughs> yeah, I saw, that. I saw that. <laughs> it's like, where are you, a holes? <laughs> asleep, man. I'm still asleep. Yeah. See, it's 33 in Dallas. That's that's outrageous. Outrageous. Terrible. Stickler says, cry me a river. It's minus something or I know, I know. That's what I, exactly. All right. Coffee talk. First thing, second. Channel news. What do we got going on here, Pilgrim? We've got uh, 100 Battle Channel. So I finished the T-56. All right. How did you find that? It's rather an odd tank, isn't it? Well, it's overpowered as the day is long. Right. Right here. T-56. Go to T-56. Check this out. Yeah. 64% win rate. 1,234 average. I have tier 10s with worse DPG. 2,576 <laughs> damage per game. Yeah. 2.1 damage ratio. I, it's hitting at 79%, which surprised me because it's not that accurate a gun. But you get up close to people and what not. Um, I mean, it's just across the board, ridiculous. 0.53 on the armor, which is good armor situationally. Not amazing yeah. armor, but good enough, especially for a heavy. Heavies tend to get hit hit by other heavies and TDs and such, so if you're rocking a 0.3 and a heavy, it's doing some decent work for you. Yeah. Um, holy cow. I mean, that, that average XP per battle. If I can get near 1,000 in my aids, I'm pretty happy, but at 1234, yeah. it's yeah. just outrageous. It is outrageous. I, I, I sort of, I always gulp when I come across one against me. Yeah. I always think, oh gosh, I wish I wasn't here now. I think this is going to be painful. So anyway, finished that. Got that to a hundred battles. Um, What's I, I, next? You know, uh, I've got the T one hundred and three, the Progetto sixty six, and there's one other. Oh, the Chimera. They're all in the sixties. Oh, right. They're all in the sixties. Okay. And then everything past that's 50 or below. So it's kind of just whatever I feel like playing at that point. Right. But that, man, that's crazy. It's, I knew, I knew it was overpowered, right? It's pretty obvious. Yeah. And one of the reasons I didn't play it a whole bunch after I got it is it was overpowered. And I decided yeah. to press through with it just to see. And that result is crazy. And the other thing that's 
funny about it is I only one marked it. It's it's requirements for marks and uh, for marks and aces and whatnot are crazy. Really? Yeah. Well, it just goes to show that you know everybody's everybody who's anybody is playing it, doesn't yeah. it? I had a twelve hundred and thirty-eight or something like that base experience game that was a class two. I mean, <laughs> what have you got to do to market that? Well, and it's one of the most played tier eights at the same time. So it's not like it's diluted at all by a no. bunch of bad players playing it. It's not. Yeah. They just they overperform too. Yeah. So everyone's overperforming in it because it's that good. So that drives the marks up. Good players really overperform. Bad players overperform. So they keep they don't really dilute the marks or no. the ace requirements. It's it's insane. We'll talk a little bit later on, too, about another tank that's coming that might be of a similar vein. Okay. Defender-ish kind of thing. Uh, let's see. Oh, Doc says, not me. <laughs> oh, Doc's not causing issues with it? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who would have thought a 2 by 460 Alpha on a Tier 8 would be OP? I know it was out of the blue, wasn't it, Sutek? It just came out of nowhere. <laughs> it's like, oh... Oh, how okay. how could we have seen that coming? <laughs> Should have bought one. Should have bought one, shouldn't I? <laughs> mm. It's it's unreal. It actually is. I mean it's it's almost better than the tier nine. And yeah. and not tier for tier. Like yeah. just you know what I mean? It's it's equivalent, yeah. I guess you would say, to the tier nine. Yeah. Quite frankly. Yeah, which is which is beyond naughty. It's Proper that is naughty, that, that is, is that is proper naughty. That is yeah. absolutely naughty. That is going to the naughty step and sitting yeah. on it for a long time, yeah. isn't it? Well, I mean, that's going over the naughty step, kicking it over and just walking away. Yeah. You're like, no, nah, yeah, exactly. I'm naughty, but Dude, I'm not even getting on the step. It, it sits on the naughty step, but doesn't reflect on how naughty it is. <laughs> it reflects on how it can't get caught out the second time. <laughs> it plots. It plots how to not get Plop caught. How to not get caught. Yeah. Only mad that it got caught. Not yeah. not sorry at all. Not at all. <laughs> all right. EU update, nothing to add there. I need, I need to get back to that because I do have some premium time that's kind of wasting away there. Uh, computer. Hopefully the last update. We're going to touch wood there, Pilgrim. Right. I'm not going to talk about it wood, anymore. Wood. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to say so far, so good. Been a couple weeks now, no real hiccups. I don't know if I can touch wood enough. So we're just gonna we're gonna strike that from the list, and we're not gonna go on yeah. about it. No. Maybe a year from and, now and we'll talk about you know, it. Well, you know, yeah, and you're not gonna go on about the fact that you have to pay a little bit extra to get at least equivalent, if not better than what. Wait, are you trying to Are you trying to trigger me right now? Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. How much did you pay extra? Every time I look at that case, I get a little mad. I actually was deleting <laughs> photos and videos off my phone yesterday because right. I had several of them that I had done for the various reviews, and I got back all the way back to the ones from the first one. And yeah. I was I was looking at the case, going, "Darn it, stupid!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, are you going to do that ad adaptation? You're going to put hinges on it, are you? I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Right now, oh it's right now. Neither side of it is on, and the reason right, okay. the, the 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 one the, the more permanent side, where usually you don't open up because that's where the wiring and the back of the motherboard and stuff is. Yeah. The reason that's not closed off is I had to mess with the wiring to get into the SATA ports, and the wiring's pulled out a little bit, and I can't quite get it closed, so I've I've just left it. I <laughs> just left it just open. Left. You you you're technically going for a desktop open. Set this, uh, rig, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, it's to, it's a it. cooling mod. Yeah, it's I mean, a it's, cooling mod. Yeah, the airflow is yeah. free. Free to flow. Yeah, just it's a free to flow <laughs> cooling mod, mod. Yeah, exactly. You can hear it whistling around the room. Yeah, <laughs> and the dog hair gets all in there, and the dust. Oh bunnies. yeah, with all the pans blowing. Yeah, how many pans you got in that rig? Yours about twelve. And then maybe <laughs> if you spill something, it flies into the case too. It's perfect. It's like a vacuum. It sucks it all in. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah. That's how it's... Uh, I mean, it's working as intended. There you are. I'll just, fl just flail some coffee around over it. It's all... No, it's over, it's over here. <laughs> Bless you. 
I'll see Bush. If, if I'd known if it could cause you that much drama, I would have said you a UK built one, mate, which is far, far superior. But anyway, <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, the BZ55 is good. Who said he doesn't use the autoloader? Aussie Butch Ranger. On which one? On the Tier 9? I do not use it on the Tier 8, but I think I have it on the Tier 9. Although I may not. I don't know. Let me find out. No, I'm, run I'm running the autoloader or the two-shot autoloader on the 9. I found the two-shot on the 9 to be superior to the single shot. I found the single shot on the 8 to be superior to the autoloader. Use it on both. Well, there you go. I, di I didn't mind it on the 9. I thought it was because the autoloader is the second one to unlock. It didn't bother me at all. But I find the autoloader on the 9 to be a, a bit better. Right. But but it's it's got 440 alpha. The tier 8's got 460. <laughs> yeah. So stupid. Yeah. We may compare that later if I if I get off get uh, off on that tangent again. All okay. right. Uh, no coffee talk next week. I will be doing the Global Game Jam, as I said in the video. Uh, anyone who wants to sign up for the Gulf Coast Global Game Jam, that's where I will be. Love to have you if you want to. You don't really have to know anything about games. Well, you don't have to know anything about programming or developing. As long as you got an imagination and want to hang out and throw some ideas around. And maybe you do have some skills, whatever it is. Music, graphic design, programming itself, developing, whatever. It's not like we're creating a Class A title game in three days and releasing it into the world. It's going to be a very simple thing, more than likely. Or complicated if you're good at it. But anyway, there you go. You yeah, see, I now, now I've, I've got two bones to pick with you about that. Okay. Which we I mentioned one before about I've now got a house general cure list as long as you're on <laughs> for next weekend. Thank you very much. Guido. You're welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she said, oh, you're not doing your Guido thing next weekend. Well, yeah. this is this, right? <laughs> and the second thing is, if you give me enough notice, I may well have bought an airplane ticket and flown mm. over to see you, you old dog. I really would have done it. I didn't think um, about that. That'd be awesome. Work. Yeah. I would have got time off work and, and done it. I would have come over for four or five days, but uh, it's a bit late in the day now. Plus, I started a new job. I can't really walk in and go, hey, guys, I need a week off. <laughs> yeah, you can. Just go in there. You need me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a press to test. I mean, maybe they don't and they fire you. I don't know. No, they go, yeah, it's fine. Just go. go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't bother coming. Don't bother coming back. Go ahead. Go ahead. But yeah, don't, yeah. Go ahead. Just, yeah, we filled your vacancy easy. <laughs> yeah, once you once you go out the door, don't bother coming back into it. But you're well free to go. Go for it. Drop your key off on the way out. That's right. <laughs> All right. Hey ho. There you go. The bone picked. <laughs> yeah, just go. Don't come back. I actually, uh, somebody else. Oh, I was going to say I did that to another friend the other day. Not that exact thing, but there was a the, the stout event at the pub. Right, There's okay. another friend of mine. He's, he doesn't go with us on the Thursday beer things because he, he's not a huge beer fan. But he does like stouts and, and porter. So if he comes over or we go out, they, that's what he has. He has a, usually a porter, but he likes stouts too. And he'll have one, you know, very very mild kind of drinking stuff. But I didn't even think of to ask him because I think it would. And, and there was food there, so it was a different thing than we usually do. Okay. And I did. I just didn't think to ask him. He's like, oh, I didn't know that was going on. And I felt like a complete heel. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you do because it seems to be a trend with you, Guido. I'm bad. I'm it bad at to it. Be a trend. I am, no, I that, that is that's one of my personality flaws. What are and your I'm, things? It, say, it I'm sure it says something bad about me. No, what it says is that you were a pilot, and it's all about the pilot. Very self-absorbed. Very. Yeah, exactly. It's all about but, the pilot. It's all about me. But here's <laughs> the thing: it's not like uh, malignant or no, no, no. Or it's just a sociopathic. A it's just like I don't. I don't think about necessarily doing stuff for that people, and I don't expect it to happen for me. I guess. Yes, I. I you know what I, I mean? Think, yes, yeah, and I think. Uh, I think there's an awful lot. The, the mindset is an awful lot. Um, and I, I'm really going to give you a hard time now. It's all an awful lot about <laughs> being a commissioned officer, about being a colonel. <laughs> when you're a colonel, people just do things around you, and things happen, and you just like 
go with the flow and you just do your thing. I'm flying a jet, I'm flying a jet, I'm planking, I'm planking, I'm flying a jet, I'm yeah, flying a jet. Yeah. And everything happens. And then if it, when, the only time you notice it when it doesn't happen. And then the colonel jumps all over the chief and the chief jumps all over the crew. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, it's there's like, some, there's something yeah, I'm to going that. To, I'm, going to a, I'm going out on Thursday night to have a few starts. Why would I bother about telling anybody about Right, that? right. Because all the little people, I'm sure they're just at home waiting for my next order. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's funny is this guy is a is a retired Navy diver. And he's actually a full bird colonel, so he's a rank ahead. Is of he? Me. Oh yeah. <laughs> now you're in trouble, mate. Yes. When you start doing that to the senior senior officers, you're in trouble. Yeah, but he was just a reserve puke, so whatever. Oh, was it? Yeah. Doesn't matter. Though. He spent his life, you know, <laughs> under the water. I spent mine up way up yeah, in you, the air. Yeah, you were up there. You were risking your life mm. up there, mate. I tell you, not just swimming. You weren't swimming, were you? Diving, swimming, whatever it is. Diving is crazy, man. He's got crazy, crazy stories. Like yeah, the training, the training they do, and the abuse on on the body in diving, especially the, the deep stuff that he did, and the saturation diving, and yeah, good lord. It, because they, I mean, they have to go through uh, what's that called when they come up and they they go through d d something or other decompression. The takes the yeah, down, decompression. Yeah. Yeah. Decompression. I mean, it, it's not just you jump in the water and go down. You've got to spend almost days coming back up again. I mean, you know, it's crazy, isn't it? So we were talking about it. I guess the saturation divers, you know, they, they get on the boat. They get into the hyperbaric chamber, which I assume that's what it's called if you're going downwards. The same kind of chamber. One one makes it more pressure. One can make it less. Some Some can go both ways, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. We would get in the chamber that would decrease the pressure so you could go up in altitude and then there's chambers that will pressurize and make you go down and right um you know down in the water down in depth yeah. i guess that's the way to say yeah. it so, well it's about equalizing the pressure on the outside of the of the, the the thing you're in isn't it so because the 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 deeper you go the higher the pressure is the pressure inside yeah it so pressurizes it i mean it is like yeah 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 so these saturation divers will get into this pressure chamber and as the boat goes out, they can be in there for weeks. Yeah. And then they go down and dive and they work. They do a lot of the diving stuff, basically living in this capsule. And yeah. then when they come back or come up, I mean, they're kind of, they can be up and down, I guess, in the water, as long as where everything they're in is the same pressure. Yeah. So they'll be in the water, out of the water. And then when they f drive back in the boat, they very slowly come back Have to up. to decompress. Yeah, come back But it's weeks. It's one, not like... One. Yeah, it's not like hours or days. It's weeks, like weeks. up to, yeah, up yeah. to a month. Yeah. It's st stuck. Wow. In the... <laughs> you imagine, you imagine having hundred tins of baked beans in something like that. It would just be bad, wouldn't it? You, they must have very bland food. You have it would to be very bad. Wouldn't you it? have to be a special kind of person to yeah. do that kind a of thing. Nutter. Yeah, exactly. You, you're, a, you're just a little. You're, 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 you know, when they turn your dial, it's like. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Do that for a living. Yeah, why not? That's yeah, what I choose yeah. to do with my life. <laughs> Ozzy's on about the, the camera views. I think we've had this before, haven't we? Is that yours is back to front? Oh, that's because I'm using... Uh, that's because I'm using... Um, Discord. With a Discord call. And one's picking up my... I, I can't... I don't remember the reasons, but basically it's a Discord thing. Yeah, I don't know. Something there, to do with technology. As of right now, I don't know if there's a fix. Although I haven't looked up, I haven't looked it up for a couple of years. So maybe they've done something about it. I know it's a no kidding, known issue with with it. One of the reasons is I'm trying to think of it. One of the reasons is because in presentations, it's backwards for me. But for Pilgrim, I think it's the right way. He can point one way or the other. Yeah, it's the right way for me because I can see the uh, old glory in the background in the correct position. Right. With the, the stars on the left and the stripes on yeah. the right. Whereas on stream, it's the other way around. There was something about presentations and the reason they did that. Bonzi, thanks for the sub, man. Much appreciated. 33 months. So there's something about like when they use it for presentations, it was easier to... i got to put that on top, so to speak, of the cameras, events. Good go morning, on. Thoris is in the house. There we go. Thoris in the house, right on. Um, yeah, so anyway, the diver thing, crazy stuff. Let's see, where were we? We were trying to get through channel news, weren't we? We were. Next stream, 
in theory, tomorrow for stack up, Wednesday and or Thursday. I always over promise and under deliver. That's the way I roll. Yeah, you do. That's the way I roll. <laughs> I just well, want Thursday's, to... Thursday's your, your, your night out, isn't it? So. Well, thir... well, so here's the deal because Wednesday is my. Is it really one? Did I get a three day out of that? Hold on. All wow. Right. That's crazy. The schedule looks good. I took Thursday and Friday off because of the event. Friday because that's when it gets here. Thursday because I just wanted to. And then I didn't realize with the rework of days off, I think Wednesday's my day off. I think I have, I'm start. I'm off for three days starting Wednesday. Wow. That being anyway. said, Wednesday and Thursday, I'll be, I'm available Friday. Probably not, maybe in the morning. But one of those days for sure, you're get you're going to get a stream. Is the I mean, even subconsciously, you can take three days off and nobody gives it. Gives a tickle, do they? Really? Nobody even cares when I'm streaming. I just like to act like people care. I just say it. Yeah, you've got... Well, I care. There you go. I care. And if I care, then my household cares. So you've just... <laughs> all two, of, all two of you. Excellent. Yeah, all two of us. Excellent, my friend. Excellent. <laughs> uh, coffee talk we talked about. No coffee talk at 30th. We'll be back afterwards. That is everything on Channel News, I believe. So missions and specials, I guess it's time to get out the blue light. Dark. Christmas is dark. well dark. and dark. over, dark. my friends. I mean, today is the last day of holiday ops. There you go, it works. Right? It so so now we got to get busy selling stuff again. We got the pause yeah. from the orgy of boxes is over. Now it's time for people to get their wallets out and actually start buying stuff again. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, to that end... Mama needs a new pair of shoes, of course. Indeed. Let's see what they have for sale. Now, Pilgrim is in the market for potentially a Kampfpanzer 07. Yeah. Now, I need the word on this. Cause there it is. I quite like the look of it, and it's a decent price. It's, uh, I don't know, man. It can be super annoying. I got to, hold on. Now I got this thing all jacked up. I got to get my chat in front of all this stuff. Hold on. It's got to be in front of Chrome. There we go. Let's do that. There it is. All right. Now everybody can see the chat. Good. Iterative improvements, Pilgrim. All right. It is. Yeah. It is. It's. It's dynamic and and improving on the on the on the fly. On the fly. It's, on the fly. Yeah. Wayne says, "Save your money." Right. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. Um, I like it, but I, it's one I'm going to have to do my 100 Battle Challenge on because I haven't played it more than just when I barely got it and did my review on it. It can be super annoying because it's almost like an autoloader. It fires so fast. Yeah. That never has to reload the clip. It right, just, okay. <laughs> yeah, it is a right, lot like okay. a Tier 8 Chromo, yes. Yep. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, Aussie, but I know, man. There's a point at which you've got so many premiums I actually played the Ron Ponzer yesterday for giggles well yeah okay that's 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 a tangent isn't it yeah video well video to come tomorrow the miserable Monday is talking about two games that where I just couldn't get anything going and that happened to be one of the tanks but speaking of you know premiums you never play Cliffy says better than average all right so others you think so Okay, so overall, everybody thinks it's it's not as. I quite like the idea of it, but I mean, for the price, it's it's cheap as chips. For me, it's twenty nine pound. So I guess that's thirty six, thirty seven dollars. Thirty seven dollars. Yeah, that's what I'm showing. Thirty seven on NA. Right, and that's just for the basic package. I wouldn't buy any of the other stuff that comes with it, you know, because I don't need it. Um, for me, it'd be I I just. But if it's if 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 yeah, maybe a coupon. If I can throw a coupon on it. Let's just see. No, I haven't got any coupons left. I guess that falls yeah. ultimately under the what's it worth to you thing, right? I mean, it's not a yeah, bad absolutely. tank. It's certainly not a bad tank. No. I mean, it's got a 3,000 DPM, hasn't it? So, it, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, just, it will chuck rounds down range, and it's fast. It will get you in trouble. But sometimes you, that's what you want. You want that, you know, pants on fire tank that rages around. So, not bad. Talk crows, what's happening? 65, yeah, 65 kilometers an hour top speed. So, yeah. it's... It, it's definitely a medium that can maneuver and and um, only sixty five. Use that word flex. Only sixty five. Sixty five top speed only. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. That's a that's a precursor right there, or a what is it? That's a 
That uh, word. Yeah, whatever that word is. Pre- not a premonition. A Jeez uh, Louise, CRS just hit. Anyway, where were we? Senlac, let's talk about that. <laughs> Senlac, cheapest chips, Sutek. Senlac, chip. Senlac. Does not play like the rest of the British lights. Not a bad British light. Kind of a standard light tank at tier 8. The KV-2R is wandering around out there. Some of these are exclusives and specials depending on various things, so I don't know if you're all seeing that. I know that the T44-100 is out there for everybody, as is yeah. the Kampf Panzer. T44-100 yeah. is okay. It's a decent tier 8. Uh, Kampf Panzer is out there. The Brunin Panzer style is available with all that stuff. There's the Cromwell B that somebody mentioned, so it's available. Yeah, KV-2R is not the same tank it was, so careful with that one. Yeah, lots yeah, it doesn't have that. I mean, it's great with the style and everything else, but the HE, the HE uh, nerf killed it really. T forty four one hundred was a really easy, was a really easy uh, campaign or whatever marathon. It was a while yeah. ago now, but it was re- a really easy one as I rec- as I recall. Yeah. Yeah. I asked three A. Go ahead. Go with the T forty four one hundred again. I mean, I. When you do the tech tree for that particular type of tank, I just find the tech tree tank far better than than the what I know. Like there's loads of people have bought hundreds of these things. People go out and buy this T44 100, and I know it's it's a fairly good tank and all the rest of it. But I, I much prefer I much prefer um, the tech tree sort of line of that type of tank. I haven't uh, looked at them for a while. I know I did the comparison when I when I did my review of it. I don't remember what the ups and downs of the things are. I know I'm pretty sure the T forty four one hundred's modules are slightly worse. Possibly. And, and is it yeah. more mobile or something? Maybe I don't know if it's a little bit more mobile with a slightly worse gun or I'm not sure what's going on with it right there, but Yeah. I, I yeah. I just feel like it's just another it's another one of those clones that you don't need to get because you can get better on the tech tree, to be honest. So the 44100's gun is a little more accurate, Cliffy? Or you're just thinking Sigma or some other internal thing? I'd have to look at the, the two, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I get what you're saying, Cliffy, but you can actually massage that with crew skills and all the other stuff you can put on it and everything else. So your tech tree, you can get your tech tree just as good as if, if you work at it. Tried to I br- think, anyway. <clears throat> tried to breathe my coffee and drink at the same time. didn't work. <laughs> Well, that's what that's what uh, <laughs> doesn't that's go what on the lungs. The didgeridoo can do, you know. You know the didgeridoo, that musical instrument from the Aboriginal Australians. Australians. Yeah. Right. Well, they can they can do that that circular breathing thing. They breathe through your nose and blow out through your mouth at the same time, which helps with trying to talk and drink coffee because you could get straws and stuff them up your nostrils, <laughs> suck in the coffee while talking. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Do you do that, mate? <laughs> uh, Sutek says the 44100 is just better than the T44, apart from ammo rack. I didn't know that. I'll have to okay, look at it. I haven't, I haven't considered it for a long time. You can put the 122 on the T44, though. Yeah, that's. I mean, that is the point. You can mess around with... If you want to run around if with If you really want to put the 122 on there. Terrible Alpha 390, very slow reloading gun on it. IS-3A uh, is out there. The right, okay. See, this is the, this is the problem, Wayne. The T44-100 comes in at £40 sterling for, for me. Well, 38 35 And And the the, uh, the the Camp Panzer is 29 So it's £10 che- Well, it's, it's not. It's more. Yeah, it's £10 cheaper. So it's th- yeah. 15 to $20 cheaper. Well, the 44-100 is more of a standard medium, really. Right, okay. You know, it's hover medium technology. Yeah. With a not great turret, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sutek, come on, man. You gotta. <laughs> I've seen people run around the 122. I think it's better now than it used to be. Didn't it get a little buff? I don't. Th- I don't think I would recommend putting it on the the T1 on the uh, T44. But I have seen them on once in a while, and it, it is a little bit surprising when you get thumped and you haven't really paid attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was that? Oh, that was a hey, T44. Ooh, ooh. Right. Yeah. Don't right. be cheap. Hey, don't be cheap. I've got I've got a house general to maintain in this fashion that she's used to. I can't afford to spend my money on these things. <laughs> you spend other people's money. Yeah, it could do, couldn't I? IS three A tank that destroyed the game. You can get it. Yeah. <laughs> but that really turned right. out to be a whole lot of nothing, didn't it? Well it did. 
It did. I mean, I don't really, I don't like the auto reloaders. I don't like the pro- proliferation of them and the auto loaders. The, as far as the meta goes, that's annoying. But this one turned out to not really be that big of a deal. No, which, which actually, thankfully, it didn't. Can you imagine yeah. if it did. You know, I mean, it can be brutal if you roll up on one and he manages to hit and he manages to pin and he manages to get all the shots off. But you know, yeah. But yeah. Uh, otherwise, it's definitely that is the definition of a one-trick pony right there. It is one hundred percent. Let's see. Although it is kind of interesting because the the reload on one shell isn't doesn't really penalize you that much with this. A little oh, bit. Okay. A little bit. It destroyed the game, Stickler. We're playing a dead game. Yeah, no, absolutely. The game's finished. It's yeah. over and done with. Uh, TL1 LPC is out there. And then some other random stuff. I'm playing the Marbrecker, though. Oh, are you? Yeah, I don't know. I just I set it up. I've had It's been sitting in my garage forever. I don't know if I have the Marbrecker or the 16801 version, or maybe I have both. I don't know. But I set one of them up, but put it, took a crew from my Malshin, which is the same crew. There's about 80, 18 people in that tank, I think. Yeah, no, isn't there just <laughs> four loaders and three, right. three gunners? <laughs> There's there's a commander and there's one on a cot next to him so they can swap out yeah. for 24 hour ops. Yeah, the, yeah, they yeah. they keep the tank rolling 24 yeah, hours a day. hot day. hot bunk. There's enough yeah. fuel on it. It's big enough. There's enough fuel on it for four week cruise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they don't have a they don't have a BV. They don't have a boiling vessel like the English tanks. So they never have tea on the go. So it's a, it's a bit of a shame, but never mind. Hey, eh? Kedge, we'll we'll see. I have a long. I have a long ways to go before 100 battles on this one. I don't hate it. And I've had a couple CCs say that they sort of enjoy it for what it is. It And it, I think it really comes down to it's not as bad as people think, but that's a far cry from saying it's good. Yeah. So I yeah. think the legend of its terribleness is overblown, but I'm not going to tell you that I think it's great. But I yeah. haven't hated it. I haven't played it a lot, but I haven't completely hated it. Although, when you play these slow tanks like this for a long time, you start to get irritated. Yeah, because then you realize the stuff you can't do, and the game yeah. has kind of gone past this big slow thing, you know. But if you can get to position, I, I think I'm gonna have a video coming out. This I'm off in four tangents here. I'm gonna start talking a little bit about maps that are completely broken in terms of deployment. Yes. Yeah. Because we have we have a few maps that the meta has locked down that is completely unfair to one side or the other, depending on where you're trying to get to. Yeah. Like maps where you can't just simply cannot get your heavies to where they need to be if, if the other team right. has any kind of competent scout. For example, uh, Oak, Live Oak. Yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. which spawn it is. One spawn has an advantage going on the tracks. The other one has a, yeah, a huge yeah. advantage getting to town. Yeah. So it's south spawn, north spawn, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you're a heavy from the one spawn trying to get into the to the town, which not a great idea anyway, but let's say you wanted to, you just can't. You get absolutely massacred. By people yeah. shooting you in the side from that hill and scouts coming into the little vi- little village there. Well, that's very similar to the ice road map. If you're south spawn on the ice road map, you've got to get across a big open gap where their lights can get in and spot you. And you have you have a much harder there. time spotting them and absolutely. shooting them. Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And there's multiple maps like there's a is it Siegfried line where if you're trying to get down to that low area and brawl, the one side has a completely yeah. protected way into it, and you have to yeah, yeah. you have to rage across. The scouts yeah. always come down to that bunker, spot you, and their damn TDs whack you in the side. Yeah. You can't you yeah. you can't get into the brawl without exactly. shedding two thirds, you know, one yeah, third yeah. to two thirds of your hit points. Yeah. And the other, and, which would be fine if you could do the same thing to the other side, but they have a completely protected. Oh, exactly that. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And it doesn't matter which lights are, are out there. The, the lights on that particularly the other team have the advantage straight away because they can get to position to yeah. spot you because you've got a big piece of open ground to cover. Yeah, so then, then what happens is people don't go there and then you're at a total disadvantage, which you learn, right? Players learn how to how to win. Well, that's how... The, that's how... that's how. I mean, I've been playing EU for the last three days and that's how the meta has changed because the, the people suddenly realise, well, I'm not going there, so I'll go somewhere else. It's, you know, we've had this before. It's very much like the beach on Overlord. In the EU, it was almost a constant factor. The, you know, from day one, everybody went to the beach. And when I started playing after doing Overlord on the NA, I was flabbergasted. I was going the eight nine line, looking back and going, oh, "I'm on my own." Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's down the beach. <laughs> it's yeah. a good question about the maps, right? We went through that whole map thing several months back. Yeah. Where not, are they? not a peep. 
if I were them, I would. Those were all close enough to finish. I'd have dumped them all into the game right there. Yeah. Warts and, and warts and all. Oil must be worked out by yeah. the game. Warts and all. Yeah. Like, what are they waiting for? It's a good question. It's a valid question. I have no idea. Um, nothing on premium account or gold really of any interest. Vehicles is pretty much the same thing we already looked at. I don't think there was. I didn't see anything of significant note there i mean there are some good tanks available if you're still into the buying tanks thing newer player what would i recommend out of these probably the kampf panzer and the t44 100 are the best of the selection that's what i would say about that senlac's okay but there's other there's other premium lights that do better yeah um, yeah, I mean, if you're going to pay for a light, then I, probably I wouldn't put money in for that, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. And it will train your light crews. Although, I think it has four crewmen in it, or does it have three? Right, yeah. I, I don't, don't know, let's have a look. Check it out, because I, I don't remember. Just while we're on it, Hanuta just cracked me up, because he said, when it comes back to the Malbracker, someone has to carry the shells from the west wing to the east wing of the tank. That's why <laughs> that's you right. got the it just that's just crap me up, well done, mate. It's like a uh, today. like a battleship that has seventy people running one of the turrets. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's three. Okay, so that works. That's good. So it will tr it will work for the LHM TV, the Setter, right. um, not the A forty six, and the G Sor. Of course, it won't yeah. it won't work directly for the Manticore, but you can use the Actually, it won't because you used you always know yeah, well, no, because uh, uh, yeah, I, it will. But you're going to lose some skills because yeah. the whatever you lose on the mana core, there's a driver. Well, I mean, yeah, driver has, commander. Yeah, so the gunner's yeah. skills will not be on any of your guys, and that'll suck. But there you go. There you have it. So that is the shilling. What else we have going on for missions and specials? Bros in arms. B R O S in arms, and that's actually a good rental, dude. It, that is a CS fifty two LIS. Really, I didn't realize. Yeah. I'm gonna put it in now. Let me activate Wargaming mm -hmm. code right now. I did not know. I didn't even look at it. I just took the. Uh, I just watched Commander. I went straight to the bit on the video yeah. where it said. I didn't even look at it. That's bad, dude. Yeah, so CS fifty two LIS, man. That is a great premium, man. A very very good premium. You see a lot of those in the game too. Uh, bros yeah, well, in I'm arms. Bros, bros in, in arms. arms. Okay. Rental really? CIS fifty two. Access to a mission. Five personal reserves. Plus two hundred percent to experience only in battle for one hour. Nice. Happy days. Bros in arms. So that's that's on NA by the way for for all my EU and and Asia friends. Unfortunately, that's just a uh, an NA thing with Commander AF. And her weekly videos. Crew is crucial is going on. Very important because we have. What has it got? We've got uh, crew discounts. Yeah. Let's get over Specialized. here. Yeah. Get Chrome Are you on it? back up. Yep. So okay. we've got 25% for crew specialization change. We have, if you're going to convert. Free XP to crew, it's 1 to 10. Crew training, retraining, 50% discount. So all those crews you have sitting around, you've been waiting to retrain and fix. Today is the day. Or yesterday well, was the good, day. Isn't it? 50% uh, discount, really. I mean, the specialization change, I don't know why they made that 25%. That was a bit mean. But 50% you know, discount on doing it. Actually. I know. This, isn't that kind of random? It is random, isn't it? Why would you do that? Is it something more... Is it something they consider to be more of a thing? Crew specialization? I don't know. Probably. Um, because wouldn't, you like, wouldn't, you like, wouldn't you like to be able to change the nations of some of your crews? That would be well? amazing, yeah. Wouldn't that be good? I think I think they should allow that for special crew members. Yeah. Not not yeah. locked ones. Some of them are locked. To, that's fine. Leave them as you know German or Russian, you know, like uh, the, the cosmonaut. Okay, I get that. He stays Russian. But the special crews, like you get for the campaigns, or yeah. you know the the uh, Christmas women and whatnot, yeah, you should be able to change the nationality. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, would... so, I mean, I've got, I've, I've got, I've, 
For example, the Sheridan, my 17% win rate Sheridan. For example, I've got a five skill crew on that. Each of them have got five skills. Now, it's wasted on the Sheridan, and I don't have any other American light tanks as such. That's, that's worth How are you 17%? My, no, the, I, I actually got it up to 21, I think, now, because we won a battle. I know, time. but but the T22 is at 52%. I don't know. Do you go I'm off? Hard. Do you go off on your own and lose? Uh, no, I game just, after I game. No, I don't. I I think I started from a low place and never <laughs> climbed the mountain. You know what I mean? I think I started from sort of like three percent win rate on it. Oh my gosh! All right. Well, so I'm I'm heading upwards. <laughs> we'll keep working on that. We'll keep working on that. My camera is like I need a better web. Stupid thing. All uh, right. We did discuss this, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barrack slots fifty oh, yeah. percent crew skill reset fifty percent. So somebody was saying, yeah. and this is a good idea, guys. Gunners, especially on your long reload tanks, it's useful on any of them. But get intuition, fellas. It is yeah. one of the best skills there is right now. On the loader. The only tank it's questionably worth anything on is an auto reloader. Yeah, because it only does the first shell, doesn't it? First shell. Super yeah. annoying. So you could be totally loaded out, go, ooh, I want to switch to heat or HE or whatever. You're going to get half the first shell, and then you're going to wait forever for the other two. So it's, it's yes, it's better than nothing, but it's limited in its um, usefulness. But for regular cyclical, it's very fast. And for auto loaders, holy cow, for auto loaders, if you want to change the ammo, it is significantly less. Very, yeah. very good skill. I've, I've started doing that since you've been talking about it. You, you, you persuaded me, and for the last, I think for the last two or three weeks now, I've started to when I've had to select a skill, started to do that. Yeah, yeah. I could, I could actually sue tech. That's true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, um, I've started, and I've noticed the difference because now, it, and I didn't, I, I'm at sort of discounted intuition as being one of those skills. Ah, whatever, do repairs or something. But now I can't do without it on the cruise. I've got it. It's brilliant. Bing. It's it's changed. Especially when you want HE or something. The it's difficulty insane. for me is trying to bring that into my cross check because I I didn't do a lot of shifting shells in the middle of a fight. I kind of went with what I had and didn't worry too much about it. I mean, some yeah. cases I go, ooh, well, this is an HE situation, but. It was unusual for me to notice that at the time that I was ready to reload, because yeah. if I was already halfway through a reload, I just said, screw it, I'm not gonna reload, and, and I'm, I'm already working this shot. I don't wanna wait. Yeah. yeah. That's not necessarily wait, a good thing. It just negated our argument completely. What's it that? just negated our argument about having uh, intuition. What? He just said, just load 100% gold like he does. No problem. <laughs> I don't know. What are you talking about? All this other ammo? There is only oh, one ammo. Right. There is. A, there's only one anim, ammo out there. Well, the other, the other one that's that's, the other one that will get you is heat. Shooting too much heat. Heat. Heat is problematic in certain situations. So, yeah. sometimes a gold heat round is worse than yeah. your regular AP or APCR, or whatever the thing carries normally. I think I think I, I run along the same lines as you, Guido. I, I struggle a great deal with high explosive ammunition of any sort because it never does the job for me, never. I've watched players use heat and high explosive to great effect, and I'm sure it does great. But for Pilgrim, it's like, oh, you've loaded a duff round right now, mate. You're doing nothing. Yeah, here's your 11 yeah. damage. Yeah, absolutely. Here's your 11 damage, pal. Yeah. Crew is crucial, so there you go. That's going on. Bros and Arms is the code, and I think that's pretty much it. I mean, there's some you can get some stuff, some uh, crew personal reserves and things for these missions right here. And I think that is it for missions and specials. Nothing else it to is. add. It is. If people are interested in the radio controlled models, there is there is a little um, blurb there. I think. I don't know how many people are actually interested. There must be lots of people. Who I get saw that. that. That looked kind of fun, actually, yeah. just for a little giggle. But I, I don't know. They're fairly expensive. They are expensive. Yeah. And then you get an invite and bonus code code with it. <laughs> if, you're, if you're into that. North kind of thing. American retailer. There is a North American retailer for it. 
But yeah, yeah, 129 I mean, euro. That's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. And it's only for one of them. I, no, that's both. Okay, it's both. Is it for both? Yeah. Okay. So that's a. I mean, it's a, a little chunk. bit of fun. It's something you can have on your desk, isn't it? And just fiddle around with it. I looked it up on Amazon. There's multiple companies that make those little IR battle tanks like yeah. that. So yeah. you don't have to go with that one. That, that's oh, talking about desk toys. Have you ever had the um, the electrocution desk toy? Wait, you just you stick your hand into into the computer and no, grab no, something? Yeah, you have a controller and you've got little tanks and you've got to fire at each other and obviously the tank that dies, that person gets the electric shock. <laughs> yeah, we used to, <laughs> we used to when, I, when I was in Germany, is a, a tangent for you, when I was that in was Germany, funny. Um, I mean, most of the German properties these days are built with cellars. They have to have cellars built as a, I think it's law, because in the Second World War when they all, you know, the only people who survived are people in cellars. So after the war, every rebuild had to have a cellar in it, built in it by law, whatever. Anyway, long story cut short. So the in case German the Allies was, carpet bomb the place again. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Just in case somebody decided to level the place again. Okay. So, uh, um, oh, I tell you, I've got another story as well about a gate guardian. But anyway, so um, <laughs> so anyway, we we as squaddies of course we all built bars in our cellars we didn't use the cellars to save lives or or anything like that. we just because they were all decked out and everything else and they had ventilation systems we all built bars so between about 10 of us we all went down and built each other's bar and we all got like hawaiian bars with like rattan furniture mm. and you know all that sort of great stuff so we used to go down and we used to have these games uh, down there um and what we found actually was that and this is so bad that if if you if you got the controllers wet, it gives a bigger punch, bigger kick. <laughs> so you would literally fly across the room when you got electrocuted. Oh, awesome. Everybody dude. had to dip their hands in water and then use the controllers. <laughs> How mad are soldiers? Just silly, aren't they? Well, that's science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's useful science right there. It is, isn't it? It's like... I mean, how can we make this more dangerous? I, I, I more fun. Ah, oh, just wet your hands. You'll get a bigger kick out. Of the I mean, you could have had the guy stand in a big tub and and to yeah, and, to I mean, to and toss a plugged-in uh, uh, toaster in there. <laughs> you could have done. So that'd you that'd the give him a shock. <laughs> so, oh, I don't know. Hey, just just as a quick another quick tangent, Gate Guardians. Do you have them in the states? You must have. So outside, you gate know, guards, yeah, 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 yeah. You've got the old gate guard. Well, I drove. I I had to go do a driving job on Friday for the company, and uh, I, I'm driving down uh, one of the main um, uh, freeways. I think you call it over the motorways here. And I looked over, and there was a, a tornado in the woods, and I, I, it, nowhere near a base. It was an old tornado, probably a GR1, covered in green moss, and looked like it had been stripped of everything. And it was such a sad sight. And I thought, you know, if I had the money, I would get that and refurbish it and put it somewhere decent. You know what I mean? Why do we do that to our, to our, th you know, why? Why does that happen? Why has somebody seen that and gone, that is a disgrace. Do something with it. It was on an yeah. Air Force base? Well, no, this is the point. It was nowhere near an airfield. It was nowhere near an Air Force base. It was in the woods. So it looked like somebody just parked it and walked off. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you do? You park it. Well, they may have been doing testing on it, or I don't know. You know, in the states, every now and again, you'll come by some place that has some of the older jets that the government used to sell some of those things, not flyable. Yeah. But and then they would give some away, like you see uh, veterans VFWs and things, and may have one of these airplane on a stick or a tank or something out in front of it. Yeah. They don't. They don't do that as much anymore. And as a matter of fact, most of the fourth gen and modern stuff, if it is in front of something. It's a uh, contract or a loan, I guess. It's still uh, right. it's still okay. owned by the Air Force. So if that place stops using it at some point, then the Air Force comes and takes it back and oh, okay. ships right. it to Davis Mountain or whatever. And it's just it's just a frame and a shell, I guess. Chief, man, thanks. Um, why is I thought I fixed that? Nope, I did not. What? Oh, this is the coffee shop. Never mind. All right, now that's fixed. Talking to myself. <clears throat> Put it in your basement. Yeah. Well, they found that uh, they found that 
panther in that guy's basement in Germany. They did, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. they took it off him. Yeah, and then find him. <laughs> Apparently, it had been there since World War II. You will not have a tank from the Second World War It had been there since World War II or something, or he had purchased sometime yeah. after and stuffed it yeah. in his in his basement, yeah. the aforementioned basement. It was probably part of his bar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> He just climb in the driver's hatch and have a have a sh uh, schnapps hanging out. Schnapps and, and you can play that electric game with your feet in a puddle. <laughs> He'd always win though. Well, he would, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah holy, he cow. <laughs> <laughs> holy cow! Holy uh, cow! Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, where were we? I don't know. Yeah, the chief. You say the the last F four team was just parked. Just parked. You just park a plane somewhere. Uh, they parked the last F-14 engine, engines and all the static display pad, just parked it. Flew it in and parked it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just left yeah. it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Threw the keys at somebody. There you go. <laughs> Do you have keys for jets, by the way? No. Do you have ignition key? No. No? No. So anybody could jump in and fly it then? Uh, depends on the jet. Some require yeah. some, some ground things to happen before it starts some don't I, I thought you were going to tell me there was a fingerprint button you have to put your fingerprint on it <laughs> yeah that's... It make it work <laughs> oh yeah that, we know this is guido you can fly this <laughs> now if everything's all set up right in the f-15 there's a you pull one handle and it starts the the jet fuel star the jfs and you can start awesome. the jet from there um, cool. but you need somebody out there to pull pins or you pull the pins first or i mean there's a lot that has to go on to launch it so it's not a case of okay turn it on and fly away just turn it on just no. like drive. I mean you can get through all that stuff if you know what you're doing but it's not it's not an easy process or not a quick process necessarily okay. uh, yeah the f14 the f14s and their uh, parts are controlled all, all actually all US parts are controlled. Yeah, well, so, I would imagine that would be the sensible thing to do. Do you not think? Well, they, yeah, they don't want to get stuff getting over to Iran, um, but that's true of any of any jet part in the U.S. We they they control the parts and where they go and who gets to them uh, as much as possible. All of the jets, generally, the jets that we sell to other companies as part of the contract, when they're done with them, they're not allowed to sell them. They come back to the states. Hey. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, so we, we get them all back. All the F-16s, and not all, but a good chunk of the F-16s that are in the Boneyard at the D-Mark. Some of them are, right. a good chunk of them are foreign F-16s. Just when that com country's done with them, we, we take them back to avoid right. them selling them to people we don't want to have them. Right. Now, you see, that doesn't surprise me, what Gate has just said there. A Marine stole a jet a few, a few years back, and I expect that's what Marines should do. <laughs> that's what they do isn't it you know if you're a marine you get a good idea you act on it you know i mean marine? stealing a jet is kind of a temporary thing i mean you're you're illegally borrowing it it's not like you're going to go hide it somewhere you know what i mean yeah. don't tell anybody about our jet in the garage <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know aussie if maybe australia had didn't have that part it's possible that some of the closer allies we don't we don't have those rules or maybe they you know at some point we just say screw it we don't want them I don't, I'm not sure what happened with the Australia that's a good point but well, I, I, well I, actually I, if they went to Canada then that was I'll bet you that, that was approved by foreign military sales so that was coordinated through the US they probably had a requirement to send them back to the US or sell them to another ally approve you know approval to be determined by the u.s that's probably what happened there if they went to canada i i also heard that somebody was trying to buy a bunch of them in, in can uh some of the australian f-18s because they were going to try to use them as adversary air all right but apparently that never happened well in um, the uk what we do when we buy stuff from you, is we always buy the less technical version. So you get fly by wire, we get fly by whatever the. You get the kind of F 35 that you launch into the Mediterranean yeah, exactly. and it goes submarine yeah. mode. Yes, exactly. So the F 35s we got is significantly less technologically advanced than the ones that you fly. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're yeah. cheapskates. Yeah. We go, yeah, we'll have them, but we don't want to pay that much for them. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, we probably just bought them back. That's also probably part of the contract, right? A first refusal or something like that, and we'll pay them to bring them back. I mean, it's. I'm assuming every contract's probably different. They're all probably based on the same bare bones of a contract, but be, different. Yeah, the other down. thing might be that some of the countries, for example, Australia might have something in there that says, once we once we stop using them, we, we're going to keep them. We won't sell them, but we'll keep them in case we need them. We can mothball them and that kind of thing. And then yeah. at some point... And I'm sure there's other things where they're if they destroy them, as long as they destroy them, they're you know, and don't sell the parts, yeah. we don't care. There's a lot that, of ways to do that. You've got a first time chat from I, I love this name. I think Holy that name, sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. reacting to. You said Norway just sold some. That's that's basically we buy them back. I suppose is a, another way to look at it. Thaddeus, just just as an aside again. There was a lot of Canadian fighter pilots who fought in Spitfires in the Second World War, mate. If it wasn't for the likes of Canadians and Americans before you American guys actually decided to get into the war, if it wasn't for you, then the Spitfires wouldn't have been flown. So, hey, guys, well done. All the guys Canucks are fun to fly with, man. The the, the Hornet guys, the yeah. Canuck for Hornet guys, we, we do a lot of exercise, obviously, since they're right next door. Yeah. And... Uh, our air defense sector stuff is all commingled with Canada. So we have down here, we have a bunch of Canadian military down here that come down to yeah. the uh, to the AOC. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. But they're very polite when they fly their planes. <laughs> they politely shoot you down. Yeah, they politely shoot you down. Oh, sorry. They have their own bar on the base and everything. So it's, it's pretty cool. They, the maple they, bar. Yep, maple leaf. I just I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called the Randy Moose. No, I'm just kidding. It's not called that. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good name for a Canadian <laughs> bar. Really I fully I'd expect it should be called that if it's not. Yeah, yeah, it should be. Yeah, Australia's buying some M1s. I saw that. I'm getting a little nervous about their giant neighbor to the north. All right, where were we? I that, was a, okay. that was a good okay. tangent. That was a good tangent. Subjects du jour. Yeah. Sub, subjects du jour. Guess what, folks? Do you want a chieftain? You guys need a chieftain. Anybody want a chieftain? Do you want your chance at a chieftain? Well, good news. Uh, yeah. Good news. The new campaign has chieftains as one of the prizes. So, starting uh, February something or other, I don't remember, 10th or 11th or somewhere in there. It's actually worse than that, Guido. It's... Um, it's it's part of the auction package so you can actually even if you don't complete everything you need to do if you've got enough points you can go into the auction and you can buy uh -huh. one ah uh, i almost i almost decided to do it but then i remembered me, me mum is coming out for a month so i'm not going to be able to no. be online every night for two weeks to futz around with that so that'll be other Another missed opportunity on the Chieftain. But anyway, yeah, this, we need more Chieftains. Absolutely. 100%. Black they've got other ones in there. They've got, you know, the 121B, the M60, the T95E6, the Object 907, yeah. the EK, and the Caro 45T. 45T. So, yeah. And again, they're all in the auction. They've reduced the reward tanks right down and buffed and increased the, the, the auction. So, yeah. It's all about money, isn't it? There we go. Or is it? I don't know. I <clears throat> I am on a low ebb in caring about the tanks, I guess. At, based on the, the whole act that went on between Wargaming and this last auction and the CCs and overpowered yeah. tier 10s that... You know, and then ranked battles, everything's a you know, a certain tank, and I don't know, it's just, whatever. Whatever. It's yeah. funny, it's funny that they, that they banned the Chieftains, so what came, came of that? Kronwagens and Super Conquerors. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Basically the same hold down game style, gameplay right there. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, I can't even be bother to be honest with trying to get a chieftain or futzing around with any of that clan wars every night for two weeks i just know and there's no guarantee anyway i mean you know 
But the, the, they've changed the dynamics of just if anybody does do clan wars or the, is going to do the global campaign, they've changed the dynamics in so much that um, you can earn points even if your team doesn't win the battle as long as your team has destroyed five enemy tanks or more. But if you st if you lose, you still earn um, enough to, to make it worthwhile playing the game. So they've really? changed that. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So they've changed it so much that losing doesn't penalise you as greatly as it did. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cliffy, but I've only got 16,000, so that's not going to be near enough to get a chieftain, so it's not even worth bothering with until I get another, a, large, a much, much larger chunk of bonds. Yeah. I didn't realize this the other day while we were streaming. I don't know if you remember this, but I, I took some bond equipment off of a tank. And I had forgotten right. that it's 100 bonds to do that. And that, oh, really? de and that oh, demount know. kits don't count for bond equipment. Wow. I did not know that. <laughs> well, that is so annoying. <laughs> it's, it's stupid. I was like, oh, man. So, goodbye, 100 bonds. I, well, I must have demount kit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I've, I've still got like 100 not demount kits to mess about with. Now I can't use them on bond equipment. Chief's got 45,000. Wow. Aussie's got 110,000. I don't even... Wow. That's nuts. Holy cow. It's 200? Mine said 100, I thought. Why is it 200? Maybe it was 200. I could have swore mine said 100, though, when I did it. I could be wrong, though. All right. So, yeah, new campaign, Chieftain. Uh, black Market. Black Market. Yeah, bossy butcher injured. There you go, waiting on the black market. So the black market, oh, pretty funny. It's one of the blogs, two line push, and I think also the other ones had this. Everyone was in a freaking kerfuffle because they had taken down the article about the black market, and they're like, "Oh my god, the black market is not happening!" And you know, big news and blah blah blah. There were forum posts and all their kind of shenanigans going on, and then a couple days later. The article's back up, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, it's back on!" Here comes the black market. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think it's going to be on. I think it's it's as you say the the um, the glorious giveaway of Christmas is over, and I now wargaming are looking to recoup. So I think it's definitely going to happen. Well, it's onward and upward, isn't it? Got to keep selling yeah. stuff. So here we go. I think there's probably I, we saw the we looked at the timing. I don't remember exactly what it is, but there should be. A marathon coming up fairly soon. Yeah. For something. We thought maybe the AMBT, but that's out. that was out in the... Uh, I don't it. think it'll be a Yo Tank because the premium's out, isn't it? It's already out. So at it's some point, out. they've got to yeah. release the Yo Tanks too. And we're we'll probably doing an update pretty soon. The Holiday Ops is over today. So tomorrow, it says the 24th, but today's the last day. Yeah. So who knows? In the near future here we should have some news on stuff coming up black market i think was not till april or so anyway i'd have to go back to that article where it showed when the tanks came out last year and you kind of get an idea what the timing was yeah so there's that um yeah i spent a lot of my bonds on bond tanks and yeah. other things i i did rank just enough to get the skoda t45 thing which was sort of useless to have but i i just spend stuff when I have it. I don't worry about it too much. Yeah, I'll see. That's what we're getting to, my friend. All right, Object 259 Alpha. <laughs> oh, here we go. Ah, uh, jeez. Let's go over and find this silly yeah. thing. It's Where's not it? overpowered. It's not? It's not going to destroy the game. No. All right, here it is. Let's get Chrome back up here. Boom. All right, here it is, folks. This is pretty funny, actually. Remember when you said your the Kampf Panzer did sixty five kilometers an hour? Yes. How fast is this oh, thing? <laughs> All right, this is super test, so this could obviously change, but it's showing, and, and it may not be a reachable. This could be a downhill number or whatever, but it shows sixty kilometers an hour for this thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's just. <clears throat> I mean, this is this is going to be. I, I guess it's in comparison to what the defender. Yeah, but it's so it's a fast mobile defender, with oh. slightly worse armor 
and better most everything else. Okay, so the, the alpha is 420, where the defender's 440, where other 122s are 390. I don't know. The penetration is better than the defender. The gold round is actually 285, and the standard round is 233, both better than the defender's regular and standard round. I think the reloading time is slightly more than the defender. I couldn't quite nail that down. It's not far off if it is. It does it's have. Actually, doing a comparison while we're on, we're on. Well, I can't. I, I sort of can't because. Well, you could pull the stats of the defender up, couldn't you? I wonder if I can do it on tanks.gg. Is that is that? Um, hold on. I don't know if the two fifty two fifty nine A is in here. Let's find out. I doubt it, but it could be. Uh, no. It's not here. But I guess we can go back to this. And I can call it up on my client and just take a quick look. That's what I did earlier. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Let me get that back to that thing. Defender. Oh, wait a minute. It's already set up in comparison. All right, so we've got it configured to standard without any bonuses. All right, so as of right now, numbers 440 alpha on the Defender, 420 on the whatever this thing, 259 alpha Defender number two, 225 yeah. penetration to 233, and 250-something, yeah. I think, on the gold round for the Defender to 285, which is approaching yeah. useful. Yeah. 15 second reload here showing 14.38 on the Defender, but the Defender has 100% crew. So in the comparison yeah. tool, it's hard to just get the tank numbers without the crew. There's a little crew without bonus, crew, right? Once yeah. once the commander gets under. So it's a little bit, a little bit off. Minus six is the same depression. 0. 0.42 is the same dispersion. It's faster. The Defender is 35 kilometers max speed. This thing is showing 60 with a 15. Wow, well, that, that's a huge... That, now, now it's in context against the Defender. That is crazy. Yeah. Because, you know, that, that silly stuff we used to do when we were on three Defender platoons and we used to charge up one yeah. side of the map. The whole you traverse... did that in the 259. Yeah. The, the sluggishness, it's got better hold traverse, better turret traverse. So it's just a nimble Defender with slightly less alpha. And I'm assuming, depending on how the reloading time works out, slightly less DPM, which yeah. the Defender has 1,836, which isn't a lot, actually. But no. the armor makes up for it. Now, this thing does, to be truthful, have slightly worse hull armor at 110, and but it's, it has the same ridiculous side armor of 100. Yeah. So 20 less hull armor. It is... More or less the same pike nose. I think the design's slightly different, but it look, but it's similar. And then 260 on the turret, where the defender has 250. So it's got yeah. a better turret. Again, depending better. on what the weak spots look like and how it actually turns out. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, looking looking at the uh, the pictures below, I can't. Even the hatches are very very small. So even if they, they are the weak spots, the left hand hatch doesn't look. Yeah that easy to hit it's a pike nose anyway and it's quite low down by the looks of it so i you know what if this comes out as it is i think it's it, it will be a problem in the game i would imagine they'll revise some of the figures well even the even the defender isn't the defender these days no i mean yeah it's still it's noob friendly and it's kind of brainless and you're going to get away with stuff in it that you might not otherwise give get away with but the derpiness and the slow reload and the low DPM limits limits its you know effective. It's still good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just yeah. so this kind of improves on it in the places it's weak, right? Faster, more maneuverable. Yeah. I don't know if its DPM is higher. I I think it's probably similar. I I didn't do the math on it, and it looks like the reload is is about the same as the defender. So. I suspect it's a fairly low DPM because it's also losing 20 alpha for each shot over the... Right. So my assumption is, after the math is done, it actually reloads slightly faster than the Defender to get a similar DPM, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I love these things written up here. It's a, uh, where is it? The Object 259 is a frontline heavy tank. Thanks to its good armor and relatively good maneuverability, the vehicle can occupy advantageous positions and engage in successful positional combat. Because that would be your rush, basic Russians complain about the defender. It's not fast enough, right? So let's make a yeah, fast. Exactly we're going to make a faster exactly. defender, and then we're going to nuke a little bit of the of these stats that because that's the balance yeah. that we're doing. Uh, also, keep in mind that the gun's accuracy won't let you fire effectively from from long range, but that won't stop anyone. <laughs> it's not going to do anything. It's not going to stop anyone from camping. No. I think, I t I think Holy the crap! The, the good point that Ozzy brought up there is that if you've got that speed on that tank, on a heavy tank, you, you're going to ram things to death all day long, aren't you? What is the deal with the... What is the shell velocity on this thing? Look at the shell velocity on the regular round. I'm just trying to find it. 1,400. Now. Oh my goodness me. That's a laser. But it's not accurate. So that's okay. Somebody it's explain to me how distance. how it's got 400 more meters per second than the regular, than the, two, the uh, Defender and 252U. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And with a higher velocity on the shell does less damage alpha-wise. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Balance, comrade. Balance. It's so balanced, isn't it? <laughs> Wow. Oh, man. Yes. See, things like, the things like when it says it's got 15 second reload, and it's, so that makes it a bit longer than the Defender. I don't, some things I like don't that. know. That says 15, but the, the Defender I'm looking at in my garage has the crew. So I, if you put the 100% uh, crew right, on, yeah, I'm, say, not, I'm not sure. We, we'd, yeah, we'd have to wait yeah. till it actually gets released. But it, that way down it's similar. Crew. Yeah, it was within a half a second or a second at least. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is Leopard One speed. I mean, that's in the that's when you start talking about fourteen, fifteen hundred in this game, it becomes like a laser. Um, wow. Yeah, I don't. I'm kind of curious how it uh, go. It, it actually hits harder and faster, but it uh, it does less damage. Of course, the the answer to that it's a rhetorical question is it's just fiddling with numbers for balance. Yeah. Yeah. None of it. None of it really makes any sense. I mean, you've, it's a one twenty-two. They've got wildly different one twenty-two damage levels on tanks. Isn't the Skirta a one twenty-two? Oh, is it really? I don't. Oh, I don't know. Are. Is that right? I think it is. I could be wrong, but it is a uh, nope. It's a one thirty. Never mind. Okay. Interesting. 130 millimeter on a tier eight. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, it's all TD area, isn't it? You know what I mean. So that thing's floating around again. It's that super test. A lot of that could change. Who knows? I don't know. But it is floating around out there. Yeah, Sutek so got a 130. Ranked? Anybody do ranked? Do you do ranked at all, Pilgrim? I, did, I I have tried it a couple of times on the NA, but as I said before, it's a time zone thing for me. Mm -hmm. Although I have tried it um, quite well on the on the EU account, so yeah, I've done it, I've done it on the EU account. But I've only got two tier tens on my EU account, so I was limited. <laughs> yeah, I need to get a tier ten on the EU, I guess. Apparently, I need to crank up to the Kronwagen. <clears throat> oh really? So I can go to hold down spots and bounce stuff yeah. off my turret and. Yeah. And hide. Well, you, you do that. I'll do... I've got the super conk. So, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Major Payne made leaks. Good on him. Kron did not work. What did you use? Interested, but not enough. Yeah, Cliffy, that's kind of where I am. We need a tangent. Apparently, Odd Dog is bored with this tank crap. Was number one by damaging Kron and still lost to Chevron. Oh, awesome. That's... <laughs> I did a video on that. I had a Manicore game. I had a Manicore game where I was actually number one damage and did a bunch of spotting and somehow some other tank that's role was to bounce shots off its forehead to go Mongo into the into the fray. He bounced enough and I think he actually had a couple more kills than I had, but ended up being uh ended up being down where I didn't get a chevron. It was awesome. 
or maybe it was a push. It was a loss. It was a loss, and I think I got the push, and he got the Chevron. Yeah. It's number one, right? Number one gets a Chevron yeah, yeah. and a loss. Is that right? I think uh, it is just number one, isn't it? Yeah, and I was two where it's a push. I mean, I didn't lose one, but I didn't get one either. Leopard one in the Czech medium. Great for flank. I'm flanking. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of CS62s. <clears throat> nice speed on them. They are, that is a pretty fun tank for beating up on lights and stuff. I set that thing up for ramming. I, don't, I did have fun with that. Got that 200 battles. Ramming people constantly. It was awesome. Yeah, Leo 1 and STB 1 are definitely uh, meta in rank. You see a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah, Sutek, I do not like the role experience. I, I like the idea of what they were trying to do, but... Um, and probably before that, before it came out and was used, I might have even said, "All right, let's." That seems like a decent idea, but in practice, it's you have to just embrace it, right? If you're going to play ranked, you got to go. All right, let me try to min max this. What you know? Let me yeah. find a tank that uh, has a role that gets experience that I'm good at playing, and then I'll do that thing, and I will advance yeah. through ranked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, I think that's what all of the um, the top players in rank do. That I mean, they pick. I mean, you get the outliers as always, but you'll if you don't pick the tank that you're best in and the one that you know how to operate, then you're not, you're just doing yourself no favors. Well, you got to play it so to it, its strengths, right? I mean, if you're going to yeah, play exactly. the dang role, then then do what it takes to maximize exactly. what you're doing, yeah. and yeah. then and then yeah. people like Guido can sit in the sidelines and carp about it. Well, Pilgrim can enter the game and get mullered the first five seconds and go, it's not for me. <laughs> this is a stupid game mode. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, people are over there enjoying themselves and getting bombs yeah. and like, yeah, whatever. I, whatever, loser. <laughs> yeah, whatever, loser. Whatever. Why be super aggressive and, and head off into the enemy? Why, why don't you do what we do? Just stay back and farm damage. I have to admit, the first, couple, the first couple seasons, I... I played a lot of arty because it was so easy with role experience yeah <laughs> before the nerf and and the first role experience for arty it was brutal you just get an arty and you know i'd be number yeah. one or two nearly loss or win it didn't matter oh, uh, the only time the only time it got bad was if say an ebr actually blasted through and killed you early and that happened enough yeah, yeah. That, that you know yeah. they'd come get you because they're you know actually there was i guess it was 15 v 15 then so there was pretty good coverage on the map yeah yeah all right. Edge, get good, yeah. You're right. Did you have a... You had a contest, right? Oh, I've got a competition, yeah. Well spotted. Get the easy one. Get the easy one for everybody. Competition. Okay. Competition time. For 500 gold, for EU and NA server. Sorry, I can't do anywhere else. I've tried. Poor old Sutek. I feel, I feel very sorry, mate, but I can't help out with the SEA. So, for 500 gold, a very easy question... So get your Google fingers and the Wikipedia fingers going. Um, this was probably the, the the most doggiest dog of a tank that the Soviets ever had. <clears throat> okay, but I, what I need from you guys is what Soviet tank, that's the clue, what Soviet tank had five different turret configurations, how many were built, and what was its main gun? And it was the actual dog of the Soviet tank world. There's only one... Every other Soviet tank is op, but in real life, this is not in World of Tanks. So, what is the Soviet tank that had five different different turret configurations? Because they were trying to figure out how to make it work. How many of them were built, and um, what was its main gun? What was what size was its main gun? If you want, the Randy Moose ran killed the game. Very close, Cliffy. <laughs> Henry the Eighth is close. <laughs> Pat Randall. Randall, you're the closest with bananas, Washington, and shoes. So, if you'd said slippers, I might have give you something. I'm stopping Guido. <laughs> I can't remember if the MiG-29 has the 30 millimeter dish. <laughs> or is it 23 millimeter? Mm, yeah, it is 30 right. millimeter. Yeah. Oh, Gator, never mind. You did. You tried hard, my friend. There's three answers to the question. So, what, what was the Soviet tank that had five different turret configurations? How many of them were built, and what was its main gun? Three answers in a go. You can't do it one by one. You've got to put it all in the same line, if you like. But none of that's right, Gator. Go back to your Wikipedia and tell it off, because it's not working properly. I think it's in the game, but it's got multiple other names in the game. Yes, it's called something else in the game. 
You'll kick yourself when you when you hear it. Five hundred gold going begging, going begging. No, Jantan, no. You're all around about the same sort of area. Forget the KVs, Wayne. Forget the KVs. Work on a T. That's a clue. Work on the T. Yeah, going once, going twice. Uh, poor old sod. No, it, I, I, I do have an interest in history. My my degree is in English literature, but um, that has a lot of history in that particular type of degree anyway. But yeah, so I, um, you wouldn't believe my uh, degree is English. I don't. You wouldn't believe I got a BA <laughs> honours in English when I can't speak or write properly. <laughs> uh, no, Gator, you're trying hard, Gator. You might get it just for hard trying. It's not, it, gents. It's not a T thirty four. It's definitely not Casper the Friendly Ghost Artillery Box. <laughs> uh, I don't remember what the answer was. Uh, you're on the right lines with T. And it was the dog of the Soviet tank lines. So, so that's giving you a clue on how many were produced. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you go. The Chief has got it. Well done, Chief. Well done, Chief. There was one actually built and survived. Oh, wow. Um, it's T-34, 76mm. <clears throat> there was one actually built and it survived, although there was another 60 in planning, but they never got to build them because it was a dog. <laughs> T-35, huh? T-35, which I think is the T-28, is it not? Well, there's multiple things that look like that, so I don't know if that's actually one that's in the game or not. It's like the T-29, right. it looks similar. The T-28, you know... E with F three fifty looks similar. It is rigged, Wayne. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they probably won't admit to being Soviet. They'll say it was a oh, Chinese knockoff. Is one of uh, are one of those tanks now a collector's item? Oh, it could be. Oh, Jesus! Oh, it could be. Thing. Yeah, it could be. Uh, Chief, let me know on a whisper, mate. Your uh, I think I know you didn't get a name, but then send it to me anyway. I don't think it's NA, or if you want it on EU, I can do that for you. Just let me know, Chief. There's a tank. A Soviet tank that I'm not seeing. Was it not the T-28? I thought it was the T-28. Well, oh, there it is, T-28. T-28, yeah. It looks, it looks a lot like that. Yeah. Yep, T-28. That's still, it's still in the tech tree line. The one I had doesn't configured because I guess I sold it at some point and rebought it. Cool. Cool. All right. Easy man. competition this week. That was easy. Yeah, yeah. Easy yeah. five hundred. Easy peasy. Yeah. Easy peasy. Well, if you guys have any questions, chuck them out. Questions, chuck them out there. We should be streaming sometime this week. Like I said, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday. Ideal. We should have it on Monday. Early after or late afternoon, early evening for stack up, and that's it. I think pretty much for news. No questions heard. Do it a few a few seconds for the delay. Anything else from your side of the Atlantic, there, Pilgrim? Uh, no, I, I think we have covered everything, haven't we? Um, and I'll just be a miserable old sod next weekend sitting here. Cleaning things for the house. <laughs> We're going to need a video of that. Check TDs. Yeah, I saw something about that. I don't know if that's happening or what's going on with that. It's a good It's a good point. I saw something about that. but uh, Actually, somebody had a video on it. Somebody did a review, right? Did they? So. Yeah, oh, Bandu. I would, yeah. It's the... I mean, I think... Uh, Quickie Baby touched on it. He, he had got a video out there that a lot of people saw, and he was talking about the whole down meta. It is, it is, yeah, very passive. Basically, everyone's waiting for you to get bored and make a mistake. 24 hours. Hey, Cliffy, what are they going to race in the L.A. Coliseum in some short track thing? Is that happening? Is that what I saw on the, on the commercials yesterday? Is it big, right, is it big enough to do that? Holy cow, that's crazy. 
<laughs> I am definitely watching that. Then. It's a NASCAR race, short track. Yeah. Inside the LA Coliseum. That blows my mind. It's stupid. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, how fast are they going to be going? That's crazy. Wow. Will be, pardon my French as shit. <laughs> I'm assuming it's not going to be very many cars. It can't be. Well, yeah, because it's going to be a limited in size, surely. Yeah. Uh, LA Coliseum. Hold on a minute. i got to see this. Clash at the Coliseum. Yeah, they got pictures of it. Man, that is a short, short track. Wow. I mean, that is... They got. They're building a track. I don't know how they've the done that. Coliseum. What the heck? I mean, how? What kind of safety barriers are they be putting up there? You can't. No. They can't be going that fast. It is not. It is small, dude. Here, look, uh, sorry. Let me show you what I'm looking at. Look at this, guys. So this is for NASCAR. How many how many cars? Did anybody say? I can't read it. I think there's a here's here's the general idea. That is nuts. I don't even get that. <laughs> uh, let's see NASCAR. Season opening bush light clash at the Coliseum. Historic first visit to Los Angeles Memorial. A quarter mile asphalt oval track. Still quarter of a mile though. Yeah. I don't know how they build that in there. That's when I mean, I've got your that site up now and I'm looking, I'm thinking I'm playing the video right now. There's a video attached to it, isn't it? Local fairgrounds and stadiums. Doesn't really talk about how how many cars or uh, people will be racing, but that's that's nutty. ARCA race that's inside a high school football stadium. Holy cow! Well, the 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 video is showing a lot of cars. It is, Instead but I don't know how many they can possibly get yeah. on, in there, man. You gotta think. You gotta think. They must have it up on. They must have. How have they put the? Uh, oh, we call it tarmac, asphalt. Yeah. You call it. How have they put that down? They laid something down first, so it didn't destroy the track, and then laid that on top. Well, the commercial had three drivers, only one of which I recognized. Um, Bubba Wallace, I guess, is involved, and there were a couple of their drivers that they showed. But I don't know how many they can possibly get in there. Foot six, eight, maybe. I mean, how would you pass? You're going to be constantly, I don't know, it's nutty. Crazy we'll see how it goes. Capri, how are you, man? The Clash Capri, has always been a gimmick event. Oh, okay. I didn't, even know they, I didn't even know they did it otherwise. I thought this was brand new. So the Clash is just getting everything started, I guess, by invitation. Four cars, 25 Laps. lap heat race. Ten, oh, wait. Laps. Ten cars. Wow. Oh, my cow. Yeah, Chief. Do you remember that, that they had a, the car game in tanks? That whatever it was, that mode they had that you could drive around a track or something. That you know, that's what it looks like, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what happens, man. Yeah, I might watch. I'll, well, I'll definitely watch it next week because I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> well, in between cleaning, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah, I'll have to get my chores done first. But thankfully, the time zone will help me out this time because it'll be of a time zone when she's gone to bed. <laughs> I can't believe they're going to put 23 cars on that track. That's nuts. That is crazy. It'll all just go around at 10 miles an hour. All right, cool. Yeah, when the cars go electric, the electric cars are crazy fast, ridiculously fast. I mean, I, they're just... As a tangent, I had one of those in front of me. Um, and we were going slow because there was uh, slow traffic and once the traffic cleared the acceler uh, acceleration on electric cars is just crazy now my experience with electric cars 
and you might not get this in the states but we used to have uh, ernie the milkman who used to go around with a milk float delivering milk to it every door and he had an electric milk float and i used to help him out when i was a kid i mean i'd get a couple of quid for helping him out so ernie the milkman uh, in his electric float which did about eight miles an hour so this thing that was in front of me just took off like a bat out of hell i just went <laughs> gone i was like wow that is just i want an electric car just for the acceleration you know yeah cool yeah formula e, yeah bat out of hell Talking bat out of hell, Meatloaf died, didn't he? What a shocker that is. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's wow. Sucks. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you, you start feeling your age when all your icons start dying off, don't you? Yeah, man. 100%. You know, not making fun of it, but you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Bad. All you hear are the tires squealing. That's crazy. Yeah, no worries, Chief. Appreciate that, man. All right. That's it, folks. Thanks for coming by. That's everything I've got from the left side of the Atlantic. Everything I've got from the correct side of the Atlantic. See you guys later.